have some visitors I see in the uh, crowd out there tonight. Glad to have you with us. Always welcome to be a part of our meeting uh, each month. At this time, I'd like to call on our vice chairman uh, when we deal with the approval of the minutes. Mr. Vice Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I've reviewed the minutes and found them to be accurate and true and move for them to be accepted. We have a motion to Se second. have the second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Minutes have been approved. They will be placed within the records. I know we have an agenda before you and we will be going into that in just a second if it be the uh, wishes of this committee. We've had a request to uh, make some special recognitions from the EMT. Can I have a motion that we suspend from the rules to make those special? M move to suspend. We have that motion. We have a second. We'll ask that uh, the director come forward at this time and make those special recognitions. Carl Hudgens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor, and members of the committee. I appreciate you letting me cut in uh, front of the agenda to do this. Um, you've heard me for years talk about how well trained our paramedics and EMTs are at the ambulance service and every now and then I have to get reminded. And one of our supervisors, Wendy Lampley, who I'm gonna ask to come on up and bring her team up, um, sent me an email about an, an unusual um, situation on a call. I'm not gonna get into detail of it. I'm gonna let her um, uh, tell you a sh brief uh, short story about what happened, but it just shows again the uh, caliber of paramedics and EMTs that we have here in Rutherford County, and I think you'll be impressed with the story that, that uh, I've asked Wendy to um, give. After she's done, I'm going to give accommodation to these paramedics and EMTs, and uh, it will be placed on their uh, permanent file. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. On December 4th, in the wee hours of the morning, Rutherford County EMS was dispatched to a possible overdose with CPR in progress. I was dispatched along with the first crew. Shortly after getting en route, we were notified there were two patients on the scene suffering from the same condition an additional ambulance was dispatched. The first unit arrived, then I arrived, and the second unit was on the way. We quickly found there was a third victim suffering from the same overdose. We rapidly got a third unit en route, and I watched these people do something that teetered on the edge of something that could have gone very badly, very quickly, and these three teams when it was said and done, at three o'clock in the morning, I was making my rounds on the scene to pick up any left equipment, trash that shouldn't be there. I looked up and there was three ambulances in the driveway of this home, and there were three patients in the back of those ambulances that were awake, talking, and breathing on their own at this time. And it dawned on me how big of an event had just occurred, because we take that for granted sometimes. It happens, we do it, and we roll on. So I felt like, the quick actions and diligence of these paramedics saved three lives that morning. And it was just an astonishing thing to stand and watch these six people just work in such cohesion to make the outcome be what it is. So I felt like we needed to recognize them. It's something they do every day. They didn't ask for anything extra for doing it, but it was something extraordinary that morning. And I felt like they needed to be noted noted for that. Deanna Allen. Mr. Keith Adele. Austin Metter. Is 
Sophie Fuller. Jenny Reynolds. And Miss Sydney Brooks. I'm proud to work with these guys every day. I was a little bit prouder that morning, um, but they know every day when they come and go from that ambulance service how proud I am of the work they do. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for what you do. Um, it makes uh, Rutherford County citizens sleep a lot better every night knowing you're out there uh, ready to take care of them and, and protect them like this. And I hope that we never, ever take them for granted for what they do because they are so important. We'll move on with the agenda and we'll begin now with pause. Gregory? Have you the report for November in front of you? You can see that we took in 494 animals. We had an adoption reclaim percentage of 84% and a euthanasia percentage of 3.1. When you figure in our live release rate, we had a 96.2% for dogs, a 94% for cats, and overall a 94.2%. Our surgery program was busy for that month. 156 animals were reclaimed from that program, and then 46 cats went through the TNR program. You can see that our officers completed 1,553 calls, traveling 10,094 miles. Fiscal year to date, we've had 2,634 animals enter into the shelter, a live release rate of 92.4%. Our officers have completed 8,399 calls. That put them traveling for the first five months of the year, 58,645 miles. For our rabies exposure and bite report, we had 33 bites reported for the month. One of those was sent for testing that came back negative, and we did not have any other exposures for the month. And then the last page of your report is just the visual graph that I give you all so you can see the live release versus euthanasia and other outcomes. And that is my report, sir. Any questions on the report? Motion to approve the report. Motion to approve, Commissioner P. Second. Second, Commissioner Gurley. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Report is approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. OSHA. Salem. Commissioners. OSHA report for November. As you'll see for the total for November is 15. Accident frequency calendar year to date is 160. Total recordable 115. Restricted day claims 61. Lost day claims 24. Other recordables 31. On the job injury claims for 2021, you'll see there's 160. On the job injury incurred dollars, 502,000. And then the, the last page you'll see the cause of injuries, Board of Education had 12, County General had three, Sheriff had two, EMS had one. And that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Questions on the report? Move to approve. Motion approved, Commissioner Gurley to have a second. Second. Have the second, Commissioner Serino. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Report is approved. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. Moving down to recovery court. Good evening. I'll start my report um, with just the overall picture of the. Um, 
month of November. We had 14 new participants, taking our total up to 154 for the month with nine graduates. Um, at the current time, we have 120 people per, um, pending entry. 59 of those are waiting on an NCIC report from the district attorney's office, and 61 are pending furlough or assessment just because their court date's out a little further. Um, we did receive word this morning on the BJA grant for DUI expansion that you all had approved, I think back in January, um, and went in front of the full commission um, maybe in February. It's a four-year award for fiscal year 21 for the Adult Drug Court and Veterans Treatment Court Discretionary Grant. The total project was $733,500. Federal awards at 75% or $550,000 with the county match of 25,000, or I'm sorry, 25%, which would be $183,500 for the four-year period or 45,875 per year. Even though it was just announced, um, the award period actually began on 10-1. We did receive word early in August and September that um, the BJA was behind on those awards and that we would be notified by the end of this year. Um, so we did get that today, even though the award period began on 10-1. Um, I guess at this point, we need to get permission to accept it and then go from there with the budget. Um, that does include a, um, a subcontract with the evaluator, um, Lauren Allred of Allred Consulting. So that's one of the um, things that just came through this morning. I did send it out. I'm not sure if it's on your um, iPad or not. Um, also, I wanted to... Um, thank a small group here in town. I've, one of the churches has a small group, a men's small group, that every year sponsors our mental health court and buys gifts for the children of our participants and provides a Christmas dinner for our clients. And um, they do it out of the kindness of their heart. They're not affiliated with us at all. And I just want to say thank you um, to them. They even have Santa come and visit the kids. So just a special thank you out to that men's group in the community for that. And that is my report, although I know I need to go back and be voted. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, do you want a motion on the report or the grant first? Uh, let's have a motion on the grant so that we can approve the report from there. I move to accept the grant and forward on to budget with a budget amendment coming forth uh, next month. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Have a second. Commissioner Rather, further discussion? Call the roll on that, please. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Serenio? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Rather? Yes. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. Motion passes. All right, we'll accept a uh, motion now as far as the report is concerned. Motion to approve the report. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Commissioner Rather. All those in favor of the motion to approve the report, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Report is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Probation. Evening. Hey. All right. For our November report, uh, we terminated a total of 118 cases in the month of November. We currently have uh, 972 active cases that we supervise. Um, we have 59 active participants in our classes. This month of those, we had eight voluntary, um, voluntary referrals for service. Just to add to that, I was thinking, I don't know if I'd ever really explained that in detail. Um, once somebody completes a class with our office, they have an exit survey after they finish the classes just to kind of see what we can improve on their likes, their dislikes, their suggestions, because honestly, the best person to hear from is those that actually attended the class. Um, but it's a good tool that we have to improve things or change things around if need be. 
But they also have the opportunity to sign up for other services that we have within the office on a voluntary basis. So I always include those in the number of people that are in classes. Um, so we actually had eight individuals select to have a different service. We have life coaching, individual, um, couples, um, different things like that that they can um, select to do. Um, in our Olive Branch, we had six individuals that we were able to assist this month. Uh, one out of those six um, individuals were homeless. The others were falling on a hardship. Um, donations, we did have someone in need of a new wheelchair. Um, so we did get a, a donated wheelchair for that individual. Then I also added the total numbers for our toiletry and food drop that we had in the month of November. That was a success. We actually had um, our local community corrections department donate 30 cases of bottled water for us, which is huge. Um, but aside from the bottled water from community corrections, we collected a total of 718 items for our food and toiletry clothing um, assistance that we will be able to service for the next year. Um, which is an incredible number because that's not just canned foods, that's tents, hats, gloves, jackets, um, things that were on our Amazon wish list that may not have been on the actual flyer. Um, lastly, our financials for the month of November, our total revenue was $16,455.96 with a difference with our expenditures equaling $99,143.57. For the total amount of money turned over to the clerk's office for the month of November to be paid on payment agreements equaled $8,061. The number of um, the dollar amount for those that failed to enter a payment agreement was $2,937 for the month of November. So far this fiscal year, we've turned over $36,261.95 to the clerk's office to be collected on payment agreements for probation fees. And then so far this fiscal year, there's been $26,972 of those that had not entered a payment agreement with the clerk's office. And then our total number of indigent cases for the month of November equaled 13. And I also created and added a visual, and it doesn't really do it justice, but this is the pantry that we have in our 20 North building. Um, we have clothing racks on the opposite side, but the first picture would be the before, um, and then the second picture would be the after, just to kind of create a visual. And again, it doesn't do it justice. Um, I'd like to also thank Virgil Gaiman. Um, he really stepped up and sent a lot of things and a lot of items that we were requesting. Um, and Commissioner Rhonda Allen also helped us. And I'd like to thank anybody else that also assisted us with those needs as well that I may not have the names of, but I did have those on the slip. So I wanted to thank you guys for that. Um, but overall, it was a success. So, And that would be my report for the month of November. Motion to approve the report. I had a motion to approve the report. I have a second. Second. Commissioner Phillips, any discussion? Thank you, Commissioner Gammon, for helping fill up that pantry. Uh, saw the pictures there. That looks really good. Right. And, and we actually, I wish I could do it justice. We had, I mean, the amount of tents and backpacks and like winter gear or just basic things that that maybe we take for granted that we don't think about, you know, feminine product, anything that you take for granted because you just always have those at your house. Toothbrush, toothpaste, things like that that people actually need. So, huge help. Good deal. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Your report is approved. Thank you. Correctional Work Center. In your packet, you'll find our minutes from our last board meeting, our work release program, which is still going pretty well, 
Our yearly activity report, you'll see that, uh, can't really tell on there, but population's creeping back up. We knew that it was going to be coming around eventually when the courts open back up, and uh, we're starting to see that now. Our worker report over there uh, next in the packet uh, will show a total combined savings of $60,928. Uh, saved by using M8 labor. And then the last one is uh, total trash collected on county, state, and interstates for the month of November would be uh, county roads, county trash, 8,660 pounds collected, and then state routes, including interstates, 420 bags collected. And that is my report. Any questions on the report? Make a motion to accept. Commissioner Gammon makes the report to approve. Second. Second. Commissioner Serino, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Report has been approved, sir. Chairman, if I could uh, ask for permission to invite uh, one of our retirees up and uh, recognize him publicly, Mr. Curtis Manus. Forward. I'll try not to make this sound like an obituary or something. So. Um, when I first came to Rutherford County Sheriff's Office from uh, Tennessee Department of Correction in 1999, uh, it took a little bit of adjusting to say the least. Uh, their philosophy was much different in the prison system than what uh, we have here on local level. So uh, looking around to try to find uh, good leaders, um, there were a few names that uh, that come to mind now. Uh, uh, Bob Asbury and Virgil Gammon, Mike Fitzhugh, and uh, and Curtis Manus. And so for 33 years, Curtis Manus put on his uniform and walked into the places where uh, most people are really too scared to go into, into a place where the majority wish you bodily harm and some even try to inflict it. A place where people curse at you just because you woke up that morning. A dangerous place that most uh, common citizens know nothing about other than what they see on television. If you'll take a moment to think back to the most heinous crimes that have been committed in Rutherford County in the past 33 years, it's almost guaranteed that Curtis Manus had daily interactions with those perpetrators of those crimes. As the commander of the Sheriff's Department's uh, Transportation Division, he transported murderers out to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, which is now closed. Uh, rapists over to DeBerry, which is now closed. And uh, others all over the state of Tennessee. As a shift commander in the jail at 940, he led with the strictness of disciplinarian and a heart full of compassion. When we were lucky enough to recruit him at the work center, he became a driving force behind some of our most successful rehabilitation programs for inmates returning back into our community. So a lot of times we throw, away, uh, throw around that uh, term public safety and public service, but uh, Curtis Manus uh, exemplifies those phrases. So I'd like to take this time to congratulate Sergeant Manus on his retirement. He's been a dedicated and appreciated employee of Rutherford County for 33 years. And his leadership and experience will certainly be missed. With that being said, as a colleague who has now become a friend after all these years, I'm happy that you'll now have more time to spend with your family, Curtis, and uh, sip oatmeal through a straw or whatever it is that you guys do in retirement. So enjoy your retirement, and I can't see, wait to see what's next for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir for your dedication and to the county for this 
this department. We certainly appreciate it. We'll now ask juvenile detention to come forward for their report. Good evening. Uh, before you, we'll have our November report. Um, the Sumner County and Franklin County checks did come in after we posted our report to the website. So I wanted to update you on that information. Um, beyond that, um, everything is uh, the information that you're used to seeing. Uh, but if you have any questions, I will happily answer them. Okay, I have a motion to approve the report. Second, I have second. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Board has been approved. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you. Public Safety Director. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Mayor, and committee members. Um, before you is our report for the month of November 16th through the 13th. And I, I don't have a whole lot to add, but please keep in your thoughts and prayers of the folks in West Tennessee and Southern Kentucky as they um, uh, try to recover from the devastating tornadoes. Uh, fortunately, I'd like to report here that we had very, very minor, if zero, damage. And actually, no damage was reported to our office. We monitored uh, the situation at hand, and uh, I think we uh, dodged a big bullet. So um, just keep those people in your prayers. But I don't have much to add except to our report. Any questions for the director? Motion to approve his report. So moved. Approve. Second. Motion approved. Commissioner Gurley, second. Second. Commissioner P. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Report is approved. Ambulance report. Good evening. If it's okay, we'll do the budget amendment first. As you know, we have a line item strictly for donations. <clears throat> Excuse me. This year, we've received a check from Schwann Cosmetics for $150, Middle Tennessee Christian School for $50, and St. Rose Knights of Columbus for $500, totaling $700. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also had left in unspent donations from last year, $3,135. We are requesting to transfer a total of $3,835 into our donations line item for EMS week. This is strictly within our budget. They're strictly donations, no tax dollars are included. Move to approve. Second. Have the motion to approve and uh, second. Call the roll. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Rather? Yes. Mr. Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. Thank you. Okay, on the um, ambulance side, we had 3,375 
calls, um, 84 hospital transfers with a total of 3,459 calls. Average response times at 7.8. Uh, we had 80 deaths that we investigated. We received $2,000 in um, payments on those investigations. Uh, out of those 80, 21 went for an autopsy. We spent $41,160 for those. Year to date, we're at 137 autopsies. And year to date on those fees was $268,520. On um, collections, we billed $1,765,063. Total collected was 751,754. Year to date collections are at 4,182,488. Um, projected yearly collections is at 10,037,971 and a 51% collection rate. Uh, insurance write off at 290,940 and other write offs at 98,660. Mr. Director. Flip over to the non-emergency side of the ambulance service. Director. <clears throat> yes, sir. Director. Yes, uh, I had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we get off the first page, uh, 7.8 second response time. Yes, is, sir. Is that, have we truly gone up to that or is that a result of uh, some of the issues that we're both aware of? Um, I've got some concerns but I can tell you from the investigation that I've done, this is not an EMS issue. It's the way we receive the information and the mayor may want to dig off in that. <clears throat> yes, mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner Gurley, we're well aware of, of and not happy with those response times. We have uh, met with several um, on several occasions with the city, with um, uh, Mr. Smith, Steve Smith with E911. Um, our concern is that um, uh, they have gone to a new software system. Uh, I don't recall the name of that system, but I remember other cities looking at it and having the same difficulty. And the problem is, is that um, um, we have seen them dispatching their own fire department trucks to a, a wrong address. Um, I think Mr. Clark, if he's still here, uh, he has been involved, engaged with this. We, we've, I think there was a meeting as late as today. Um, our paramedics have not been able to talk, uh, or not talk, but listen to the dispatch when, when our um, EMS ambulances are in route so they don't know how to be prepared but uh, he, he's got a file about this thick of where uh, the city has gone to the wrong location, different hotel, different address. Uh, they go in, we go in and, and all wrong place so they're, we're having issues with the city and we've asked them to get it straightened out because seconds means people's lives. Well that's my point. Uh, as you're well aware uh, your predecessor, as soon as response times got up in the close to seven minutes, then I, I started harping on it. Uh, and what do we need to do to fix it? And well, we're it, on top of it. We're just trying to get them to. Th to that's the reason I asked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On a call that we get uh, directly, or is this the type of th response, or is this because of the system? And you've answered that question right now. And we, we need to not let systems get in the way of people's lives. And if citizens of Murfreesboro are listening, then uh, you need to start talking to your mayor and city council uh, about uh, getting it, because it's your life that's uh will suffer as a result of it well and and it's not we're not having those issues in smyrna laverne or eagle Bowl. so it's directly uh, in correspondence with with this new system that they've purchased a lot paid a lot of money for and we don't care i don't care about that you know well seconds count that's the big point yes sir mr chairman could Mr. Our increased traffic 
have an impact on response time as well? Well, it, 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 yes, um, that's a good question, but if I got an ambulance that's sent to the wrong address, one or two of those in a month can mess up your whole response time average for the month. I, so. I, I, I would wholeheartedly agree with that, but my response time to get from home to here is uh, twice what it was. Yes, sir. Even a couple of years ago. Yes, sir. So I must, I'm wondering if, if, if traffic is having an impact on emergency response as well. Certainly not helping us, <laughs> that's for sure. But, um, um, and, and it does play a part in it also, plus the growth of the county and we're having more calls also. So um, there's a whole lot of factors if, but, but there's it, some that needs to be corrected immediately. Commissioner, if you want to go in and, and Google Pro QA, P R O Q A system, you'll see some, uh, some of the problems that Pittsburgh and Detroit and some others that have implemented this system are having. So it's, uh, write that down, you may want to Google it, Pro QA. You'll see the dilemma that we're in trying to get the city to to let us in on that that call. Continue on. Okay. On the non-emergency side, they had 465 calls. Total build was 404,865. Total collections are at $80,458. Year to date, we're at 596,000. 822 projected yearly collections are at 1,432,373 at 30% collection rate. Insurance write-offs was at $129,298. And on the next page, um, the county's PIO Ashley McDonald wrote a real nice article about uh, a couple of our paramedics and um, it was actually a patient that they had resuscitated after being in cardiac arrest. And I would encourage you to uh, read this article. And once he recovered and was at home, he was so grateful that he actually wanted to meet the paramedics and including the dispatcher. And that was paramedic Tiffany White and EMT Cat Sherry and dispatcher Kathy Reeves. And you flip over, you'll see some pictures where um, he had made us some t-shirts. Just a very, very grateful and fortunate man to have um, this team to uh, work on him. And I just showed you at the beginning of the uh, meeting tonight, the caliber of paramedics that we have. We have a lot of them just like them. So um, I'm very comfortable where Rutherford County's at as far as the talent we have at the ambulance service. Okay, um, over, flip through the page, you'll see the uh, pictures there. Um, Paramedic Thomas McKentry and Ollie Leslie had, um, I didn't know we had any actors in our department, but evidently we do, because they helped um, make a, um, I don't know if it's a training video. Yeah, it's a training video on trauma. And um, I don't think they're gonna get any more special treatment because they're, I don't think they're gonna make it to Hollywood on their acting, but um, <laughs> we're proud that they uh, were chosen to do it. And received a um, update on a patient that we flew out of Life Flight and as you know, um, my retirement, um, I approached the mayor back in October and uh, presented him and the chairman with um, my letter of intent to retire. And uh, our PIO, Ashley McDonald, um, 
wrote a nice article about it. And, and there's one thing, uh, this will be my last report that I will be presenting to you as the director of, of EMS. And um, I just want you to know that this committee and the budget committee, just how grateful and uh, thankful I was to work with y'all. Uh, you asked me some hard, tough and hard questions, but they're the exact same questions I would have asked had I been a commissioner. And uh, um, you've helped this ambulance service succeed. It wasn't me, it was all of you. And I appreciate the trust that you had in me and it's been the greatest thought. I, I think you need to come back next month so we can properly roast you, you know, <laughs> the, uh, give you the proper send off. But uh, I'll, I, for one, want to wish you the best. Uh, there's nothing like retirement <coughs> on most days. Yeah. Um, I'm not moving. I'm still going to be involved in our forensic project. Uh, I am concerned with that. And um, I've been allowed to still assist with that. And so actually I'm gonna be working for Denise part-time. <laughs> and um, I know how she is and she's very demanding and it's gonna be different because I'm very demanding, but I'm anxious to help this county uh, solve this problem that we have and um, I look forward to just working with y'all, but just in a different capacity. But again, it's really been an honor to uh, serve this county. And uh, uh, I, I'm very comfortable where the ambulance service is at now, where I wouldn't leave. We're fully staffed. As far as I know, we're probably the only ambulance service in the state that is fully staffed. We've made some major changes and um, uh, I, I, I feel I've done what the mayor and this committee would expect of me uh, and that y'all wanted out of me. Uh, but next time, if it's a, another pandemic hits, I hope your new director is uh, drinking Red Bull or something because I don't know if I can go through another one. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. But thank you, all of you. Uh, it's really been a pleasure. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Do, do we have a motion to approve this report before he runs off too fast? To motion second. to approve. Had the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carl, before you walk off from there, I got to come down there. Can't let him walk away from here. Got to tell y'all, when this opportunity come available to be chairman of this committee and when the opportunity come to start working with this new director, uh, we've crossed some bridges and we've crossed some hills, we've done some things and we've ridden some miles together. Um, you know, this was all totally new, I think, for both of us in which direction we were going. And I had decided when I wanted to be chairman that I wanted to do chairman as somewhat as a full-time job and help where I could if I needed to as far as all of you and your, all your departments. But then COVID come around. And then I think Carl and myself know about as much about COVID as the CDC does. I think we've read about as much as they are, and we've talked about as much about COVID as anybody out here. Uh, not just only in his office there, he will call me at night, and he says, I've got a, uh, a welfare check. And he's calling to check on me at home. I think he wants to see if I'm still alive. But he'll call, and Carl, we've talked pretty late at night, hadn't we? And we'll talk about, okay, where do we go from here with this? Where does this go? Do you understand this? Do we know what we're doing here? 
Uh, I'll never forget the morning, one cold morning that we went to look at these secret places that we had uh, the new uh, center we would go to to take care of some responses we had to deal with. Um, we sat and worried about where we'd get the, uh, the next mask, where we'd get the gowns, where all of this would come from. And we did all these things. And you can look at both of us. We both have tried every restaurant there is in Rutherford County. But we've come really good friends. I've eaten at his house. And I have to tell you, when we, we discuss the, the vaccinations as far as uh, COVID is concerned, and we decided, I mean, we read everything there was about the vaccinations, and we determined whenever the vaccinations come, we would take it because we thought it was that important to hang around. And then when it was my turn to take the vaccination, it snowed. One of the biggest snows we've had here in Rutherford County in a while. And he knew I was supposed to go. And he calls and said, are you going to get that vaccination? I said, well, mine's been canceled. He said, well, they got extra over here at the hospital. I'm coming to get you, you're gonna get yours. And he comes all the way out to my house, gets me and takes me to get that vaccination. But we have, we've become fairly close. And I'd have to say that, you know, he's a friend, but he's not just a friend to me, he's a friend to Rutherford County and to everybody as far as the importance of an ambulance coming to somebody's house. He saw that as a challenge in everything he did. He saw the importance of what it is. And I think he's something special that we've had here in this county. And you know, I asked him what he's going to do. He, he called me one Friday night, said, you want to go eat breakfast at the tater? Well, that's the fried tater out in uh, Versailles. I said, yeah. So we go one Saturday morning and we sit down there and I noticed he wasn't the same Carl. He said, I want to ask you, what do you think about me retiring? I said, that's okay with me as long as you do it four years from now. And he said, no, I'm going to do it at the end of this year. And I said, well, I can understand that. I know exactly how, the, how that road runs. So I asked him, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to fish some more. Carl is a fisherman. He likes to fish. So you know, when a man retires, you know, you, for me, when I retired, Carl, they gave me a rocking chair. I hadn't sat in that rocking chair yet. It sits in my living room. It's got read all about it on it and all this stuff. I, I, I don't sit in that chair. And everybody else, Mayor, I think they give them a nice plaque and all of that. I can't see giving Carl a plaque. So Carl, I went to my case today and I know you're a big fisherman, so I collect knives. And I collect special knives. I know I'm in the courthouse, but now. <laughs> this knife right here is made by a young man that lives over the hill behind me. He makes these. He's an artist. Do you know this at one time was a coal spring? A coal spring. But it's made from an alloy that has a variation which is called a 5160 spring steel which makes it a very strong steel, Carl. And the reason I thought about this knife for you was the fact that, you know, that, that sort of reminds me of you. I mean, I've seen you in action out here. You're about the, about the closest thing to a cold spring of anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> and you're pretty, pretty sharp and pretty good of a steel. This thing has some very specialties about it that he puts within his knives. Uh, you can't see it out there, but it has some bronze brads in it up here. They're just not ordinary brads. They're made out of one eight inch bronze rod cut to fit in this knife. And they're made in the, you can see them as a cross. Carl considers his savior too as an important part of his life. This has a special edge on it. 
usually where you have just a finger hole right here, it has the year cut in it right here in Roman numerals, where it protects the fingers, but it also tells you when this knife was made. He also makes the, the holder for it. That's made in shoulder leather, which is the strongest part of the hide. He's made every bit of that, and the reason I collect his knives is because of the fact he is an artist, he's a young man, and this is what's putting him through MTSU. So Carl, for your retirement and for your fishing abilities, I don't want you to go without something that you can't clean those fish. Thank you. Congratulations. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, uh, at this point in time, I'd like to ask our new director to come up. Out with the old and in with the new. I think it'd be appropriate. Uh, Carl, I just want to say thank you for all your dedicated years of service. Thank you for everything that you've done to take this department to the next level. Uh, it's something that uh, we're proud of. This whole committee is proud of, the county commission is proud of, um, for always being there. It was a tough, tough year getting through the pandemic, but you were solid as a rock. And um, uh, you're leaving this department in good hands. So members, uh, <clears throat> we have, I'd like to introduce to this committee, uh, Mr. Brian Gaither, you probably saw on the paper, uh, but Brian is replacing Director Hudgens. So Director Gaither now, how's that sound? Uh, will be coming before you at the next meeting. And um, he's got a long tenure working with Carl over the years and, and is going to take it even to the next level. So uh, just like to make the introduction uh, to this committee of your new director uh, for EMS. So thank you so much and welcome. You. You're welcome. Fire and Rescue. Good to see you back, Chief. That's a tough act to follow right there. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, report for November, we had a total of 10 structure fires. We responded to 344 medical calls, 82 MVAs. 30 of those were with, with uh, injuries, and for a total of 598 calls for the month of November. <clears throat> Year to date, we've had uh, 65 structure fires, 58 motor vehicle fires. We responded to 3,233 3, medical calls, and we responded to uh, 684 MBAs. 315 of those were with injuries, and for a total of, of 6,207 uh, calls. The next sheet shows the countywide and the volunteers' response. Um, if you'll notice, MVAs are 1,161. I think that's where our biggest call volume has increased um, for every, everyone, and we have a total of 7,000. 761 calls, which we will, for the first time, break 8,000 calls for this year. <clears throat> the next is the uh, list of structure fires in November and their location and what we turn into the, the uh, Rutherford County Codes Department. Also, uh, I also copied this and sent it to Rob Mitchell. Rob Mitchell uh, advised me uh, if he would like to get that report and what they do. If somebody has extensive damage, he actually goes in and adjusts their taxes for them, especially if the house is unlivable. 
So I always he requests that report be sent to him. So I, I've also added him to that email list. <clears throat> the uh, next sheet is our fire investigation report. Uh, one of them, first one was caused by bathroom fan failure. Um, there was a brand new house, probably a seven, eight hundred thousand dollar home on Allen Drive that was almost finished. Uh, they was uh, ready to move into, and the painters had thrown some rags out in the pile in the gr in the uh, garage, and they spontaneously combusted and, and created a fire. But thank uh, thank goodness, uh, Squad 52 got there quick enough to to put that out before it spread and caused any damage. But that was a brand new house. <clears throat> And then the last one was a uh, electrical failure. We've, uh, <clears throat> smoke, smoke alarms have slowed down. We only did three uh, for the month of November. We still have plenty of those. Uh, the next report is I compiled a report <clears throat> to give you an idea. This is a countywide uh, apparatus. These are all the uh, engines as, that are, is owned and titled by the county, <clears throat> including the, what the volunteers <clears throat> including what the volunteers have. We uh, put in our budget, we maintain uh, all the uh, repairs and, and um, maintenance on all the county fire engines, the 1999s and the new for errors we purchase. And <clears throat> if you'll notice down there, it gives you the, um, the station location, the mileage of that unit and what we spent on uh, year to date this year. Two of our biggest expenses have been for Rescue Engine 51, which runs out of Barfield. <clears throat> that uh, truck is actually annually averaging on an annual, uh, annual basis of 24,000 miles annually. Uh, it was out of service for 69 days uh, this year. We finally got it back in service. They had multiple oil leaks. Uh, the leaks were, were covered under warranty, had a radiator leak that was not covered under warranty that caused the motor to overheat and damage the radiator. The repairs for that, for that truck at this time was $5,008.10. Unfortunately, the radiator was not under warranty and the current mileage for that truck is 73,920 miles. It's a 2019 fair apparatus and this runs out of Barfield. Squad 52 uh, is expected to return to service shortly, and this is the one that runs out of Walt Hill. It's been out of service for 142 days. Um, it had an EGR valve failure, which uh, caused some other issues. And most of the repairs uh, were because of the Cummings uh, motor, and that has a five-year warranty. That was all covered by warranty. The radiator repair was not, and uh, so we spent a total of Let's see, she didn't give me the cost on that. But anyway, it's that, that truck has got 74,822 miles on it. It averages about 18,000 miles annually. And that's uh, a, a 20, 2018 model of And But anyway, if you go down here and look at, at the, um, it, it, ha it has the volunteers listed, Kitro, Last Cassis, and Amble, and what, what, what the mileage is on those trucks. If it has a three in front of the unit number, that means it's the 1999 uh, model. The other one, if it just says engine in the number, it's the new Ferrero models, and that's the mileage and what we spent year to date on that. Uh, total of our maintenance budget, we have a $160,000 maintenance budget, and we spent $133,643.43 year to date. <coughs> As you look across that, does anybody have any questions on that? But just, we're just making sure those are maintained and, and that also helps the volunteers out on their budgets. The last page is a uh, letter that we received from Kentucky Blue Hound Search and Rescue Unit. Uh, we uh, have a volunteer uh, lady um, that wanted, has a bloodhound and we had a request for mutual aid from Kentucky after the tornadoes. And if you, if you read that, th that letter, thank you, that uh, she was able to find one live survivor and was able to find the remains of, of uh, two other people that was able to give that family closure. And uh, they sent that to us. And Mr. Chairman, if there's no questions, that completes my report. Any discussion on the report? 
Motion to approve the report. Motion made to approve, Commissioner P. No second. Second. Second, Commissioner Serino. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, it's approved. One other thing, we have sold a vehicle through Gov deals for $10,300. That money has not been deposited into our account, and until it is, they will not grant me a budget amendment. So uh, hopefully that will be done pretty soon. And what I would like is your permission to, once that is received, to be able to carry that through budget. Uh, I just want to make y'all aware of that, and I'll be, I'll be requesting that $10,300 to be moved into our, our maintenance budget to help us get through the rest of the year. So I would, I, I would uh, like your permission or your, your approval to do, that, do so, if that's fitting. It's appropriate at this time, Mr. Chairman, I would m move to approve that request and forward it okay. on the budget. Motion to approve the request. Yes. I have second. Commissioner Rather. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Thank you. I just want to wish everybody, this has kind of been a, a little rough year for me health-wise, but I'm, I'm like I'm the man, and I'd like to wish every one of you a happy and healthy Christmas holiday. I, I would like to thank you for inviting us out to the uh, recognition ceremony recently. Uh, several of us were there. I thought it went uh, very well for a first-time event, and uh, look forward to uh, doing that again. And I, th I think it's important for you, Director of EMS, to recognize uh, those people that uh, you know go above and beyond or have achieved something in their career. Uh, it's, it's not like putting money in their pocket, and that's something we need to do. I'll keep harping on that, but uh, it, it's still nice. Well, I, I do want to thank, uh, of course, the mayor for being present and, and uh, Commissioner Reed, Commissioner uh, Serino, and, and you, uh, Commissioner Gurley, for showing up, and, and Paul Johnson was there and appreciate their support, and it was a good event, and our guys were really appreciative of it. And one, one last thing, we did, uh, we did make a water rescue Friday night. The uh, waters had uh, really gotten up over the slab over at uh, County Farm Road. And there was a gentleman that was 75 years old that drove off in the middle of it. And our guys were able to go in and, and safely get him out and uh, uh, bring him back to safety. So I didn't I did want to mention that. Appreciate that. All right, uh, radio system. Evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'll be very, very brief. My report is embedded in uh, Director Clark's uh, report that he gave you. Uh, our project continues to go forward. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of work left to do. Uh, we have some supply chain issues with some of the equipment uh, for Sheriff Fitzhugh staff that was in that credit and reorder that we had to do previously. Um, we are working through some connectivity with the city of Murfreesboro. Our brain of the radio system resides within within the city there at the police department. Uh, avenues of connectivity that historically did not need to exist because we didn't need to talk to that building now need to talk to that building. So uh, we have a very collaborative effort going on with uh, Mr. York and his staff at County OIT and uh, we're working through those issues and, and uh, uh, there's a tremendous amount of work left to go, but we're, we're working, it's going. Uh, I think uh, everywhere I go, everyone seems to think the system's working very well. I think Commissioner Gurley uh, uh, hears that along his path as well. So um, I'll yield very quickly and uh, get out of the way. If anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. You wanna have any questions? Thank you, sir. Sheriff's report. First part of this is our financials. I do not see anything we need to be concerned with right now. Of course, you notice the jail overtime, our overtime will probably be speaking around April, May, on that, 
If y'all see anything else you have any questions about, I'll be happy to answer that. Our water project, as you can see, is still paying off pretty well. We're half of what we were to, uh, you say, a year and a half ago. So that continual, continually saves us money in that area. Rebel, was that with the, that was the uh, with the shower relief, yeah, shower we heads and the, water. and the toilet flush? Right. Okay. We limit. So that saved us about half. It's been, if you look back on the, uh, say October of 1920, we were 31,000. We were 14 last year and 16 this year. And our population has gone up because we had Larry, right. we didn't have the population last year. So yes, right. it's paying off. What, what do you see the impact of this recently announced 37% increase for DOC employees on correction, on uh, oh, detention I, staff? I was going to it's going to, we used to be able to say that we paid more than Department of Corrections, okay, and we were recently about even at about 35. I think they may have been 36. But now that they're starting theirs off at 44, it, it's, and as you see, my detention, we're 20 officers down now. We're 55 people short at the SO. I literally have people working 12, 16 hour shifts and coming back in detention. So at one point, we're gonna have to do what we gotta do. Now, I know we have some that we're doing background check on right now, or they're hired, but they're just waiting on some paperwork, and there's about six detention officers. I know that. Communication officers, we've got four in background. In patrol, we have eight in background. So what I'm showing you is what we have open. They're not technically filled until they're given a, a conditional or the offer, and they have to get through the background, okay? So, I mean, that's a positive, that's especially for patrol. Population is uh, still six. We go from 590 in the mornings to six at night sometimes, but it's real low. It's, it's lower than it has been pre, or for not being COVID related, which I guess that's a good thing. Any more questions on the report? Motion to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner P makes the motion to approve. Sir. I have a second. Commissioner Phillips. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Report is approved. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Chairman. Chairman. I didn't have a question on the report, but I do have a question. Um, I recently visited the SO with the fences and the gates, and it actually looks like a jail more so. I think I've said this before, but the gates were open, and I heard there was an issue with opening and closing gates. Is that resolved? There's not an issue with it. We don't have the controllers in yet because we have not been able to get them. Yeah. So you can't open a gate without a keypad. And we can't get the keypads. We're getting the keypads. It's just we need to do it all at one time. But all that supply, just like everybody else, it's supply chain issues. Oh, I know. Okay. So, and it's IT, and anything you have IT tied into, it's going to create another, it's going to make it longer than it should be, but it's just IT. Okay. Just okay. curiosity <laughs> thing. We'll get it there. I'm hopefully in two, three months. Hopefully we'll have that going. And I'll, I'll call you. You can come. I'll take you through it. <laughs> 
Okay. Or at that point of other business, is there other business, Mayor? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, remember tomorrow, 2 o'clock, we'd like to invite you out. We're having the uh, groundbreaking uh, for the public uh, one-stop. I guess it is the one-stop at Blackman. It's going to be at the corner of Blaze and Fortress at 2 o'clock. Commissioner Safety will be there uh, with his crew uh, because his, his building as well. So I'd like for you to come out, and I think uh, the Chamber's bringing 15 shovels, so we should be able to get uh, a, a group shot. Look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any other business? Mr. Rath? I'm gonna stand up for this one. I wanna to apologize to this committee and others that are involved in my absence. Um, I've missed a few public safety meetings and this is my highlight of my month is coming to public safety. So I take it very serious, don't take it lightly. This past year has been the most challenging year, has nothing to do with the pandemic in my 56 years of living. It's, it's some personal things and I just wanna apologize. I do not take this lightly, uh, but family comes first, so I apologize for missing a few meetings and I'm doing everything I can to make sure I don't miss another one. Thank you. Apology accepted, no problem. Anything else? If not, everybody have a Merry Christmas and uh, we'll see you, if not before, next year.